you know, most of us understand the fact that we don't grow yeah. nearly enough food here in Singapore. We can't. We don't have the space. Correct. It all comes from somewhere else. We're dependent on the global supply chains. Much of it comes from Malaysia. Much of it comes from China. And Australia, of course, is another place that it does come to uh, from. Now, there's something called the International Freight Assistance Mechanism, IFAM, which is a big, long, fancy word for saying uh, it's an emergency support measure put in place by the Australian government to keep global air links open, keeping food and things going around the world uh, in response to the pandemic. And now, uh, as of the 30th of August, IFAM is committed to set $18.7 million to charter charters and blocks with Singapore Airlines, making it the fifth largest airline partner to keep food moving. Uh, we are very pleased to have Will Hodgman on, the High Commissioner for Australia here in Singapore, to tell us more about this IFAM and, and its importance and where it's going. Uh, Will, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, gentlemen. Great to be on the show. Um, but I must say, before we kick off um, on that subject, I'm a little yeah. disappointed to hear uh, that's Australia's one and only James <laughs> Bond, George Lazenby. There you go. Um, who distinguished himself by appearing in just one Bond <laughs> film on Her Majesty's Secret Service in the year of my birth, 1969, why he hasn't been well, we're, uh, actually, but Will, we did talk about him in our, I think it was our 9 or 10 o'clock hour. We did say Will. We that. did actually talk it's, about him. It's easily <laughs> in my top three Bond movies and is many people's favourite Bond movie. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Will, is a stone cold classic. Yeah. Hodgman. Absolutely. Will Hodgman. Yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> Shake, shaken or stirred, Will. For the next Bond would be my <laughs> suggestion. There you go. Well, you know, Will, one of the things we've been talking about is the fact that uh, I personally believe that they should retire the, the Bond uh, series now with this last movie Neil was saying he thought that might be a good time as well just to say put it to bed you know it's had a good run time to move on what do you think about that no um, I'd love to see it continue forever with an Australian uh, and look perhaps a female um, 007 or um, some more modern twist on on what is a classic uh, film franchise I've like you guys, love it. Um, Casino Royale, the most recent uh, version with um, what I think, who I think is the best Bond girl ever, Eva Green, um, is uh, is perhaps my favourite. But before we, we get onto our issue, Will Hodgman, over the years there have been a number of Australians in the frame, and I do believe that off the top of my head, Hugh Jackman, mm. Guy Pearce, they're just off the top of my head, would have made magnificent Bonds. Absolutely. Um, so I think it'd be worth considering another Aussie um, to perhaps do a few more films than George, who only notched up that single film back in 1969. <laughs> <laughs> but it was right, a classic. Well, it was a classic. Bring it back to Australia. Hey, well, let's move on, if you don't mind, because uh, this, this IFAM, the International Freight Assistance Mechanism, is so important to what's happening now uh, with the pandemic and, and global uh, supply chains. Tell us a bit more about this, because the Australian government is really cent central to this uh, effort right now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's another great example of uh, important collaboration between Australia and Singapore. It demonstrates the very close connections between our countries. And as it happens, this scheme, which was put in place back in April of 2020 to help get great Australian fresh produce into markets like Singapore and Southeast Asia, um, has also, in response, supported Singapore Airlines uh, in bringing vaccines into Australia and also Australians back to Australia over uh, the last year and a half or so uh, as well. So it's a, a really important demonstration of the close connection between our countries and uh, where we not only have common purpose and objectives, but we partner reliably to support each other um, as we get through this very difficult pandemic, which did present that terrible food security risk to Singapore early mm. on. Um, but the scheme continues uh, to support Australian exports, get their pro exporters, get their products into the region. Um, and when just in August of this year, our government announced that it would be extended into the middle of next year as well. So it shows how important it is keeping these uh, global supply chains open, um, not only for fresh produce, but it also supports medical supplies, equipment, other goods into this region as well at a time when our airlines have been 
uh, severely disrupted. It's been really important to keeping Singapore Airlines in the air. Yeah, I mean, it's a fascinating point you mentioned there, Will, because obviously we're not really a food-growing nation. We are dependent on our neighbours for a lot of our food supplies, and, and COVID only amplified that. And I do think there's a tendency in, in, in Singapore, Will, sometimes to take it for granted. I do keep an eye on it, having lived in Australia for five years. It's interesting to me that my milk is Australian, my cheese is Australian, that mm. I buy at the supermarkets here. I mean, just give it a little bit of context for Singaporeans, whether it's a... a a, um, a monetary figure or a product size figure, just how much we actually get from Australia. I mean, I'm thinking dairy products for starters, but there's just so much, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And um, Singapore is Australia's top um, overseas market for perishables. Mm. So think of... Was that right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Think of, um, of dairy, beef, uh, pork is in fact the number one commodity, um, vegetables, and there have been literally hundreds of flights via this scheme uh, bringing product produce into to Singapore. Um, we've committed the Australian government $18.7 million to charters already uh, and blocks with Singapore Airlines, making it um, the fifth largest airline partner we have. And as I say, it's a scheme that's been operating um, since April of last year, $110 million in funding to keep these supply chains open. The, the total commitment uh, with the extensions that um, include programs um, throughout 2021 and into 2022 will contribute about a, a billion dollars, $1.04 billion indeed to, to funds mm. that support and subsidise uh, this scheme. Yeah, we're talking to Australia's High Commissioner to Singapore, Will Hodgman. Uh, Will, when you look at this, num one of the numbers I saw was $260 million uh, in funding extended to IFAM from the Australian government. Wh where does that money actually go to Australian businesses, or how, how, does the, how is that actually distributed? Yeah, it's, um, it supports uh, businesses who need to apply for this freight assistance um, scheme. Uh, as I say, it doesn't just include uh, producers of food. It can be other important supplies. Obviously, in a pandemic, a global pandemic, medical supplies are an important product. Um, it's driven by overarching principles rather than just a list of, of commodities. And eligibility for um, products must include the, the product being Australian-made or produced um, of high value, uh, with some time sensitivity around it. It has to be reliant on air freight, um, again, most often due to its perishability um, or otherwise deemed in, in the national interest. So it's not just limited to agricultural foods or seafood, um, but other products as well. Um, and um, it's been important, as I say, to assisting Singapore during those very tough times. I wasn't living in Singapore, but I'm um, told by many that there was great concern about food security, um, and this has allowed, um, I guess, a, a double benefit in that Australian producers are able to access uh, what have become increasingly expensive trade routes. Um, it's mm. acknowledged that freight carrying has become incredibly expensive, in fact, two to six times more than normal. So to recognise that um, and to provide support for Australian exporters so they can actually get their product onto onto planes in a commercially viable way, um, they do receive that assistance. And the other important point, as I say, is that uh, Singapore Airlines, who have been a great partner to Australia, getting vaccines in, getting Australians home, um, has also benefited from this scheme which has kept their planes, helped keep their planes in the air. Mm -hmm. And it is extraordinary, Will, when you think about it, that even that we're still going through COVID now, even the tough times we've had in the last 18 months or so, whether it's the smallest supermarket on my street corner or the bigger cold storage and uh, fair price stores, there is always fresh Australian milk there, always, every day, every single day throughout. That. And it, it still amazes me. I say to my wife, do you know how far this milk has come and mm. how quickly it had to come to get to this tiny little supermarket? Why is it so important? That's the economic perspective. But why is it so important to maintain these close links between Singapore and Australia? 
Yeah, and they are very close. And I was lucky to, to be in the Fair Price store uh, just recently to see Australian Fair, which um, happens a couple of times each yeah, year yeah. in supermarkets right across That's Singapore. Right. Um, it promotes and very much elevates Australian produce uh, for a time that um, is typically um, Australian, I guess, in theme. But throughout the year, there's there's a very high level of, of Australian produce on supermarket shelves here. And there's a high increasing demand for these products. I think that's the, the important thing. Singaporean consumers, and it's not just Australian expats like me, but clearly um, people from across the world and those who live here have uh, a, a strong desire for Australian produce. Um, it's typically high value. Um, it comes from very reliable sources with environmental considerations and biosecurity arrangements in place in Australia. People can be confident that, that, that what they're consuming is, is safe, fresh, clean, um, and it's, it's very good value produce as well. You can get that high quality, high premium grade Australian produce across Singapore, but it's very price competitive as well. Um, yeah. and it's very, it's very high value. I just jump in there. Well, it's very high value yeah. with this Australia fair at fair price at the moment because I get Tim Tams at discounted price. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that, Will. Uh, your needs are so yeah. simple, Neil. So simple. Hey, uh, Will, uh, I've just read uh, today that there is talk of a possible um, uh, lockdown in Queensland as the cases are rising there. They haven't had the official announcement yet. Um, also, at the same time, Qantas has announced that it's going to restart its international flights on the 14th of November. Uh, so there, there's a lot going on, and, and we see some of these, you know, heartbreaking pictures of the protests happening, uh, you know, in Sydney and elsewhere. But what What is your take on where Australia stands overall in, in the fight against COVID? Because there are so many competing things that are seemingly happening at the same time uh, across such a, a huge country. Absolutely, and we're at, um, I guess, a different point in the journey, the COVID journey, than, than other nations, including Singapore, um, with our vaccination rates rapidly increasing now, but after some issues early with supply availability into, um, into Australia. And again, another great collaboration between Singapore and Australia was a recent vaccine swap, which we were able to, to execute to get 500,000 doses, Pfizer doses back into Australia at a time when we desperately needed them. They'll be returned soon to Singapore. Uh, you know, another great collaboration between our countries. But having said that, um, and with, with vaccination rates now increasing um, at quite a significant pace in Australia, 78% um, of Australians um, have had their first dose, around 55% of Australians their second um, some jurisdictions in Australia are on track to reach 70% in the coming weeks. That'll help allow Australia to start to reopen. But we do it at a time, and a bit like Singapore, where there's a sudden increase in COVID cases in communities across Australia. And two states, New South Wales and Victoria, already in stages of, of lockdown. Um, yeah. We're recognising in Australia that it's necessary for us to open up, notwithstanding um, increased cases, uh, but with vaccination rates increasing, with uh, governments committing to, to open up, it's important for, for our economy as well and for Australians living at home. Um, so it's encouraging. It's a hard balance, it. isn't it? I mean, it's a really hard exactly. balance to get this right. Uh, every, you know, every country around the world is struggling with this, including Singapore at the moment. Yeah, that's right. And it's a, it's a balance, uh, tough decisions to be made by by governments, but with those vaccination rates getting up to, to where they need to be so that it is safe to allow travel to reopen. It's encouraging to, to hear the Australian government say yesterday that they expect international travel uh, to start, uh, recommence in, in November, and of course for our airline partners, uh, Qantas, Singapore Airlines, etc., to, to be flying um, Australians back home. Uh, but also, importantly, Singapore students, mm. many of whom have had their education disrupted for the last two years. They're a really important um, group that we want to get back into Australia. And I know there'll be many Australians wanting to visit um, Singapore and the region when it's safe to do so. 
Well, that was going to be my question, Will. I mean, great news. We saw the news this week that Qantas are going to resume flights, hopefully international flights, in November, as you mentioned, which has a direct impact on Singapore because they transit through Singapore. You mentioned education there. That's the obvious one, and aviation. What other aspects, what other businesses will benefit once the borders of Singapore and Australia open up to each other again? Well, there'll certainly be opportunity for um, people to, to travel uh, as tourists. Um, you know, recreational travel has been hard hit um, over the last two years and uh, there are many people who want to, to be able to travel for leisure purposes. But uh, business people, we know there's a, a high level of, of um, business interaction, trade and investment activity between Australia and Singapore, our sixth largest trading partner and uh, Singapore. Uh, one of the largest investors in Australia. We need to ensure that those who want to see our economies recover and that growth continue uh, want to travel in person to facilitate that. Um, the international students are a really important group and there are thousands who, who study in Australia each and every year. For those who have practical components to their education in medicine or engineering, for example, have really struggled to have their, their education continue um, effectively over the last two years. So they'll be in the first group that's returned to Australia as part of trials um, now underway. Uh, and I think that's a really important connection between our countries, a people-to-people -people link that has helped build this, this relationship. And similarly, um, those who who work um, in the, the cultural industries, the creative economy. I know there's a lot of interest uh, for, for artists, for um, performers, uh, for those who work in cultural industries to be able to travel between our countries as well uh, when it's safe yeah. to do so. Well, we're certainly hoping, you know, for all of our sakes, that all of these links get uh, reestablished as quickly as possible. And in the meantime, the IFAM, the International Freight Assistance Mechanism, is uh, going to keep food coming into Singapore, which is good news for all of us. And uh, thanks to you for your time today, Will Hodgman, the uh, High Commissioner in Singapore to the country of Australia. Thanks for being with us today, Will. Absolute pleasure. Look forward to catching up again sometime. Love to have you on in the future. Thank you.